The House has passed a measure to increase the federal debt limit by $480 billion. President Biden is expected to sign the legislation into law. The Treasury Department had said if the government didn't raise or suspend the limit by October 18th, the U.S. would risk defaulting on its debts. But it's a temporary fix that will last only until December 3rd. That means lawmakers will find themselves searching for a more permanent solution in less than two months. For more on this, I'm joined by CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian. Hi there, Nicole. So how soon can we expect President Biden to sign this measure into law? Well, I think you can expect President Biden to sign it in relatively short order. I mean, look, uh, this will, in essence, uh, allow lawmakers more time to negotiate a longer-term fix to extending or suspending the debt ceiling. But for now, this will cover them until early December. This will raise the debt limit by almost $500 billion, which will allow the nation to cover its bills in the meantime. Well, this measure passed the Senate last week after minority leader Mitch McConnell agreed to help Democrats raise the debt limit. But in a letter to President Biden Friday, he said he won't compromise again. What options then do Democrats have to avoid this again come December 3rd? Well, Speaker Pelosi said today that she still hopes that there can be a bipartisan vote, and the White House reiterated that as well. So, you know, from Democrats' perspective, it seems that they still want to try to get Republicans on board or think that ultimately maybe they can force their hand as they feel that they did with this short-term extension. But, you know, I think if you talk to Leader McConnell and Senate Republicans in particular, they will tell you that he has been clear from the start, really since the summer, the Democrats really need to go it alone. Right now, they don't seem willing to commit to putting this in that larger reconciliation package that includes a lot of spending for social programs, uh, which is one way that Democrats could potentially do this unilaterally. One thing that was interesting today, Elena said Speaker Pelosi did uh, seem to suggest that, uh, you know, for instance, uh, maybe changing the process, giving, uh, for instance, the Treasury Department the power to uh, lift or raise the the debt ceiling, that that idea has merit. Uh, so whether Congress can uh, draft up legislation uh, that, that deals with that, you know, I think is still up in the air. But uh, again, the speaker suggesting that something like that has merit. So there are a couple of different ways that uh, lawmakers could go. But for now, it seems the general consensus, at least among Democratic leaders, is to try to do this in a bipartisan way. Of course, as you pointed out, though, uh, Republicans are not at this point uh, willing to go along with that and kind of sticking to the position that they had uh, prior to this temporary extension. Well, December 3rd is also the deadline to pass legislation to avert a government shutdown. What's the latest on that? So at this point, you know, we expect that lawmakers will once again, uh, you know, come up with a, a remedy to address that. That really has probably been one of the uh, lesser controversial things in terms of uh, legislation. You know, there really wasn't any big issue in trying to extend a government funding uh, earlier uh, this year or, or, or last month, I should say, in terms of this short-term fix that they uh, passed. The issue was putting that debt limit language inside of the government funding bill. So we know. Uh, as is usually the process here, you know, Congress works on a number of appropriation bills that they are expected to take up by the end of the year. But it certainly is something that is on their radar. The White House asked about uh, that and the prospect of a lot of looming deadlines at the end of the year. But uh, Press Secretary Chen Psaki suggested that certainly Congress uh, should be able to uh, kind of walk and chew gum at the same time and, and didn't seem too concerned about uh, Congress's ability to, to address government funding before the end of the year. Well, it's interesting, Nicole, a recent CBS News poll shows a majority of Americans say they either don't know the specifics or even anything at all regarding the president's Build Back Better plan. And you asked House Speaker Pelosi about the messaging surrounding this bill. What did she say? Well, basically, she kind of put the onus back on us in the media, saying that we need to do a better job of explaining it. But the reality is, when you ask a lot of members, you know, what's in it, what's going to stay, what's going to go, they don't necessarily want to talk about specifics. So that sometimes can make it a bit challenging to explain, especially now when we know that both House and Senate lawmakers are really embroiled in some deep negotiations as to how they pare back this package down. What we do know is that there is 
or there are several buckets of priorities that are important to Democrats as far as this package is concerned, whether that is, you know, universal pre-K, whether that's paid family medical leave, whether that is extending child care tax credits uh, that many Americans are receiving. You know, there's a whole section of the legislation that deals with climate and clean energy, uh, also health care in terms of trying to lower the cost of prescription drugs. Senator Sanders has been a key proponent of, uh, you know, making adjustments to Medicare so that it includes uh, dental health and vision coverage for seniors. So, you know, there's a lot that is uh, that this package encompasses, but again, uh, unclear exactly uh, what will stay and what will go as Democrats try to pare this down because the speaker did acknowledge today and the president has acknowledged that ultimately that $3.5 trillion price tag is going to have to come down. And Nicole, is there a timeline that Congress is hoping to pass both the social and infrastructure spending bills? Uh, that's right. So in, in terms of the timing, you know, what progressives told reporters today in a call is that they believe that both of these packages need to be linked together, that they have to move at the same time. And I asked the Progressive Caucus Chair, uh, Pramila Jayapal, if, you know, they think that Democrats can hold to this deadline at the end of October to at least try to have an agreement in hand with regard to that larger social spending package in order to vote on the infrastructure bill, this bipartisan infrastructure bill, because keep in mind, uh, you know, the smaller infrastructure package does deal with, you know, the basics in terms of roads, bridges, uh, and surface transportation. And, you know, several provisions within that did expire at the end of last month. They passed, the House passed a temporary extension, but only for another 30 days. So either way, something has to be done uh, on transportation uh, with respect to surface transportation, that is, which is already part of that bipartisan infrastructure package. So it it does remain to be seen if they can get it done before the end of the month. But what Congressman Jayapal told me is that, you know, look, they're going to deal with this as long as it takes. If they have to do another temporary surface transportation extension to kind of let these negotiations play out, uh, they will do that or they believe that should be done because, again, they want to keep that smaller bipartisan infrastructure bill and the larger reconciliation package together. All right. We'll continue to track it. Nicole Killian. Nicole, thank you. You bet.